Welcome to the Elstra Munchkill Contractor Safety Training. Contracted personnel are required to receive a basic orientation prior to working at the Tillman Mill. This orientation is a brief review of site-specific issues and establishes the expectations for work at the mill. It is not a substitute for initial and ongoing training in federal and state rules, as well as regulations provided by the contract company. COVID-19 Protocol At the Elstrom Monkshow Tilmany Mill, surgical masks are mandatory until further notice. If you are sick, stay home. Maintain social distance when possible. Wash and sanitize hands regularly. Follow CDC guidelines for isolation or quarantine related to COVID-19. Go to the guardhouse if you need a medical mask. The contractor parking lot is located off of Tilmany Road. It is the first entrance on the left after the Tilmany safety sign. Contact your Tilmany job coordinator to determine offloading within the yard. Any personnel or company property, including but not limited to vehicles, lunch pails, purses, etc., is subject to inspection upon entry and exit from the mill yard area. Contractor access to the Tilmany Mill is through the contractor trailer. You are required to obtain a badge and notify security with your badge number before entering the mill. Introduction, possession, or the use of drugs, alcohol, and explosives on Tilmany property is strictly prohibited. The company respects the rights of outdoor enthusiasts and fully supports their right to transport and store in their automobiles, firearms, ammunition, and other relevant sporting and outdoor equipment. The company, however, prohibits employees from bringing firearms into the workplace. Tobacco products, electronic cigarettes, and tobacco-less chew are prohibited on the premises. This applies to all work areas, parking lots, buildings, vehicles, on persons, in lockers, in lunch boxes, in purses, or anywhere else on company property. No smoking in personal vehicles while on company property. Safety glasses with side shields are required to be worn from gate to gate at the facility and in all work areas. Glasses may be removed in offices, break rooms, and restrooms. Glasses cannot be removed during breaks in work areas. All employees and contractors are required to wear safety toe footwear at all times while in manufacturing and maintenance areas. Hearing protection is required in all designated areas. Dust goggles with a strap is required in the following areas. All areas when using compressed air to clean, the pulp mill, recovery, and utilities, including the chip belts, the fifth and sixth floor digester, line dust control room, soup floor floors, dust hopper, coal system, bark system, and the DSI ash system. Minimum head protection of a bump cap is required. Higher level protection, such as a hard hat, is acceptable in place of a bump cap. Exceptions is your office or office buildings, control rooms, conference rooms, restrooms, lunchrooms, and break areas. Hard hats are always required when overhead work is being performed. The wood yard is also a designated hard hat area. All contractors must carry a pair of gloves with them at all times. There are multiple ways to carry your pair of gloves, such as in a pocket, wear your gloves, or carry with a glove clip. Exceptions, office space or office buildings, control rooms, conference rooms, restrooms, lunchrooms, and break areas. Shirts with a minimum sleeve length of two inches required. No holes larger than one inch in diameter exposing skin. Shirts are required to be tucked in to prevent entanglement within the machine. Slacks must extend below the ankle and have no holes that are larger than one inch in diameter exposing skin. Shorts are prohibited throughout the mill. Hooded clothing is permitted in the primary area and during outside work. Hooded clothing is not permitted around moving mechanical equipment. All jewelry shall not be worn in the manufacturing and maintenance areas. A medical alert bracelet and necklace is allowed. Hair extending below the collar and or projecting out must be restrained. Beards must not exceed 2 inches in length restrained. Cell phones should be used in safe areas out of the way of production or construction tasks. No driving or use of equipment while using a cell phone. No walking in 
production or traffic areas while using a cell phone. Seat belts or restraints must be worn by operators and vehicle occupants whenever the vehicle is in motion. Riding in the rear of a pickup is prohibited. Pedestrians should remain in safety walkways whenever possible. Watch and listen for the beeping of powered industrial trucks at all times. Neither pedestrians nor powered industrial truck operators have the right of way. It is important to always make eye contact with the driver and wait for acknowledgement before attempting to walk past the driver in operation. For any immediate medical emergency, dial 8911, which goes to security. Describe the emergency in your location and do not hang up until you are directed to do so. Security will call outside emergency response or Tillman's first responders. Every accident, whether or not it results in injury, must be reported to your job coordinator as soon as possible and before leaving the mill at the end of the work shift or day. Immediately report fire emergencies to 8911 to notify security. Contractors are permitted to use fire extinguishers. Contractors are not permitted to use company fire hoses. Every accident, whether or not it results in injury, must be reported to your job coordinator as soon as possible and before leaving the mill at the end of the work shift or day. See your Tillman job coordinator for specific instructions for the areas in which work will be performed. The rally point for the mill emergencies is the contractor trailer. Do not move from the rally point until you are accounted for and you are directed to do so by your Tillman job coordinator. Follow other employees along evacuation routes during emergencies. For severe weather, follow marked tornado routes. Listen for the emergency or severe weather announcement and follow the instructions that follow. Your attention please. Your attention please. The National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for this area. Please follow department procedures for a tornado warning. The exact position of the storm is being tracked, and the Kakuna facility is not, repeat, not in immediate danger. Do not use the security phone numbers except to report emergencies. Yellow caution tape is used to restrict access. Yellow tape can only be crossed when a hazard is known. Every time tape is used, red or yellow, a tag must be attached to the tape. The tag must identify the hazard. Red danger tape is intended to eliminate access. No one shall cross the danger tape. Every time tape is used, red or yellow, a tag must be attached to the tape. The tag must identify the hazard. When using aerial work platforms, a safety zone is required around the base of the lift to ensure pedestrians are protected from overhead hazards and that a collision with a passing vehicle is minimized. The use of barricades along with danger tape shall be installed to surround the lift area. Blue lines that are located around machinery is designed to reduce and prevent employee exposure to hazards. It is also part of good manufacturing practices and is used to prevent food contamination to the product. The boundary for the machine is three-dimensional. Do not enter this area unless you have been trained in the hazards present. Do not walk, stand under, or beside suspended loads. Do not walk when rolls are being hoisted unless the roll is less than one foot off the floor. Each facility has established moving equipment boundaries which include the use of painted lines, signage, barrier guards, and other methods. You may not cross boundaries of moving equipment unless the equipment is locked out and in zero energy state, or unless you are trained and authorized to perform the task for which you are entering. Blue flags, signs, and lights are used at railroad crossings to alert the railroad that work is being performed on or across the tracks. Contractors should not park or perform work on railroad tracks unless a blue flag, sign, light, and derail has been placed on the rail. Contact the woodroom operator at 8342 or on channel 5 to inform the engineer of work being performed. Powered industrial trucks must be operated according to OSHA, consensus, and mill standards. This includes use of a seat belt, pre-use inspections, driving no faster than walking speed, and stopping at posted intersections. 
Fall protection is required when working at heights of 4 feet or more, including near the edge of roofs, or when leaning over guardrails or past the frames of ladders when using a boom lift or stepping off the platform of a scissor lift. You must notify your Tillmany job coordinator prior to starting job tasks requiring fall protection when you will be working in remote areas or alone. Metal and wood ladders are prohibited on Tillmany property. You are not to stand or sit on the top two rungs of a step ladder. If overextending or reaching is required, scaffolding or fall protection may be required to perform the job safely. All containers that are brought onto the site must be labeled. All chemicals brought on site must be pre-approved by the safety and environmental staff through the chemical approval process. All hazardous material must have an MSDS, SDS sheet and it must be located on site. All painted surfaces must be analyzed for lead prior to disturbing the paint. The MSDS SDS for the Tillmany Mill is located on our intranet. You can review this information with your Tillmany job coordinator. The contractor should remove and properly dispose of all waste materials and chemicals at the completion of the job. Any excess chemicals that are brought on site for specific jobs should be removed when the task is complete. The contractor must arrange hazardous waste disposal with the facility's environmental department or job coordinator in compliance with state and federal regulations. Contractors are responsible for disposal of solid waste. Flammable liquids must be stored in approved safety cans. Plastic cans are not allowed. Flammable liquids in LP tanks must not be stored inside or on roofs. Small containers of fuel can be stored in the flammable storage shed outside. Compressed gas cylinders shall be secured in carts or tanks must be capped and secured by positive means to prevent falling over. When bringing fuel on site, the use of approved safety cans and double walled fuel containers is required. Any oil or fuel storage container greater than 55 gallons must have secondary containment. Any oil or fuel stored where runoff could go to the storm sewer must have secondary containment regardless of the size of the container. Pouring of substances near or into a process or storm sewer is greatly prohibited. Any unknown insulation or other potential asbestos containing material is to be treated as asbestos containing material. Do not disturb asbestos or presumed asbestos containing material. Contractor personnel are prohibited from removing or disturbing material until the insulation or material is determined to be asbestos free. In normal use, no one will be exposed to harmful doses of radiation. All radiation areas are clearly posted and located in areas that do not require frequent access by employees. Initial installation surveys verify safe radiation levels. All zero energy state lockouts must be planned with your Tillmany job coordinator. Each zero energy state lock must identify the employee and the company name. Each individual must place his or her own personal lock through the HASP on the facility lockbox system. You can use your company lockbox as well. Each individual must remove their own lock at the end of their shift. Contractor employees are prohibited from operating electrical disconnects or isolating energy sources without authorization from the department in which the work is being performed. In an effort to prevent high losses due to bug contamination in our products, please open doors only when necessary and close them immediately when finished. A Tillmany confined space permit is required when entering any confined spaces. Atmospheric testing must be performed and documented prior to entering any confined space as well as every two hours. A hot work permit is required for each person performing a hot work task. Hot work shall not be started until all precautions specified by the permit have been taken. The permit must be authorized by the Tillmany Fire Chief or Assistant Fire Chief. Trained fire watch shall remain for 30 minutes after work is complete. Other Tillmany permits are required for specific work activities on the job site. Hot work, confined space entry, radiography, personnel basket, scaffold, trench entry, excavation, power line, asbestos removal, hazardous system work, and camera use permits. Demolition activities and equipment removal should ensure that all remnant hazards are eliminated, such as bolts protruding from the floor and sharp edges. 
Before beginning any construction or renovation involving painted surfaces, the material must be tested for lead content. Contact your Tilmany job coordinator to assist with this process. All paints used at the facility will be lead free. When excavation work is being performed, if you suspect or detect any contamination, stop working and contact your Tilmany job coordinator. At the Tilmany Mill there are restricted access areas. These areas include the recovery boilers, digesters, and wood yard. To access these areas you will be required to complete the contractor restricted access training video and a hands-on walkthrough. The use of the man lift is prohibited until properly trained. Training will be provided for the contractors that will be using the man lift. Access to areas with turpentine is restricted. After completing the turpentine training at the Tilmany Mill, you will be permitted access. The Big Five Violations Zero Energy State, Lockout Tagout, Man Lift, Confined Space, Smoking, Fall Protection The violation of these policies will result in the disciplinary action up to and including the removal from the premises. If more than one employee from the same company violates these policies, the company can be removed from the premises and future work opportunities denied. Contractors are expected to be retrained on an annual basis.